Hi, I'm Jason. I'm 53 years old. I have stage 4 metastatic prostate cancer that's uh, spread to my spine. That's why it's metastatic. And on this channel, we talk about it. Uh, welcome to episode 13 of our podcast series. So in previous episodes, we've uh, I've shared my story, my diagnosis, the treatments, basically the whole emotional roller coaster. Uh, we've gotten into some detail on what the biopsy was like, what the treatment is like, uh, a lot of stuff. One thing I've only hinted at a couple of times is diet choices. And today we're going to talk about how food impacts our diagnosis and treatment and recovery. Whew. So food choices for me became a priority when I found out I had stage 4 cancer. It was one of the first things I immediately jumped into and started changing. Uh, what can I change? Because I knew I wasn't eating good. I don't know. I'm a, I was going to say I'm a big guy. I'm an obese guy. Um, of course, my weight loss program right now is working really well. What's my weight loss program? Cancer. <laughs> the uh, but obviously food isn't just about satisfying. That was so bad. Isn't just about satisfying hunger. When I was diagnosed, I was given a couple of different treatment options and some general medical advice. Right, I'm obese, and so one of the first things, one of the first recommendations was lose weight. Uh, if I lose weight, my prognosis gets better. Uh, eat healthier, so that you lose weight. So that your my prof, so that my I that mixed up my yours and and my and whatever it doesn't matter. Uh, it gets better if I eat better. Um, but I also found out I'm not supposed to lose too much weight. I started losing weight pretty fast uh, right before my radiation treatment, and. And then I found out I had some competing priorities. I had to lose weight to improve my prognosis, but also I had to be careful about losing too much too fast because of the treatment. Because when they start off on the treatment, I went through this on the, my what is my radiation treatment like? You know, I got three tattoos, one on each side and one on below my belly, uh, below my belly, way below my belly. And, uh, they need to line that up, and those give them an idea of where, how, where to treat me. And so if I, my body mass changes too much, it changes the calculations that go into that. Because they put a lot of effort into figuring out what the, basically the, the energy of the ray or rays are. Either way, I knew I needed to eat healthier, but what did that mean? So this is where... Um, my doctor, my radiation oncologist, had, uh, has a book. He has a couple books now. And he reached out and gave me one of those. It's called Empowered Against Cancer, Science-Based Strategies to Optimize Your Treatments and Thrive, a Practical Guide by Dr. Brian Lewinda and Connor Middleman. A fantastic book. And uh, a lot of what we're talking about today comes from that. He's also got a second book out called Optimizing Health and Cancer Outcomes with Functional Medicine. So for those of you that uh, are interested in, and we all should be, uh, functional doctors, functional medicine, what does that mean? The He's got some really good insights in there. So both of these are available on Amazon. Um, uh, there's going to be a link in the uh, description. I don't make any money on these. This is... This is, uh, links are there just, just for you. So there's lots of diets and protocols out there. So my doctor has this, uh, this one. He published his thoughts on it. And what gets confusing for us is that there are so many different opinions out there. There's lots of diets. There's lots of protocols. Someone knows someone who cured themselves or came close to curing themselves by following some vegan only or pomegranate seed rich or powdered mushroom filled smoothie. I'm, th that one's at the top of my brain because I'm going to talk about the mushroom filled smoothie I take every day later. But uh, <laughs> people people follow, they, they know somebody who's followed some kind of these these plans, these cure-alls, uh, uh, but it's pretty clear. The evidence is really clear that there is no one food or supplement that cures cancer. For example, let's jump ahead a little bit and talk about tomatoes. 
there's a there's a bunch of state studies out there saying, hey, tomatoes have lycopenes, and there's evidence that the lycopenes in tomatoes may prevent can- prostate cancer and may help kill off prostate cancer, may help you heal, recover from it if you do have prostate cancer. Okay, well, you can't take a study like that and just say, all right, I'm going to go buy these pills because then then these anybody can go make a pill. And they can go find some place and they can say, hey, I need you to make this pill. And it's got powdered red stuff in it. And it's, they're, they're going to call it lycopene. And maybe it's tested as lycopene. Uh, but that does, that's not going to cure cancer. It's not going to prevent your cancer. Because what they do is they study these tests. They do these blind tests. They do uh, multiple tests under all kinds of different conditions. And what they found was it's not just lycopene. So the giving somebody the, like a lycopene supplement didn't do anything. And what's important was how lycopene works with other things that may be in the tomato. It may be in other pieces of their diet. So um, don't go buy in a specific supplement. Like I'm, I'm, don't go buy a pomegranate supplement because you read something on the Internet or a lycopene supplement because you read something on the Internet. What, what all this comes down to, and this is, this is really jumping in, this is the message of this whole thing, is that the... Uh, Our health depends on the whole picture of our diet. It depends on everything we're intaking, not just, hey, this pill is going to fix it or cure it. Um, Yeah, our diet is part of a bigger picture. There's no one thing that's going to cure us. Uh, as far as diet and food. So, and some men seem to do just fine eating whatever they want in moderation. I see that all over in the forums. Hey, the, I, had, I found out I have prostate cancer. What, you know, they're in there. This is me typing. Well, I got a microphone on my way. Uh, they, get, they get in there and they type, uh, I've just found out I have prostate cancer. What should I eat? What's going what's gonna to cure me? What's going to help me? And uh, the, the results are mixed. About half the guys will get in and say, whatever you want. Why limit yourself? And then uh, the other half, uh, the, the, the camp I lean more towards is, hey, a healthy diet, something plant-based. Make sure you're getting lots of cruciferous vegetables, lots of, and all these things we're going to talk about. Um, and w- where's the truth, right? We, if the truth was that easy, we'd already know it. So we're, the studies are still in progress all the time. They're still looking at what exactly, how all these things work together, but it's complicated. And it's probably true for some men that they can eat whatever they want in moderation. Maybe the rate at their, can- their cancer growth is such that uh, their body can adjust to um, whatever they're intaking and, not, and it doesn't impact it or affect it. Uh, mine, my cancer is aggressive, and so I wanted to be careful. I wanted to make sure I was not inhibiting the treatment by eating or drinking things I shouldn't. Um, so I'm not in the camp that hey, here's the specific list of other ingredient of food and ingredients that are acceptable, and that's all I'm going to eat. But I'm also not, and I'm just going to go crazy every day and eat whatever I want, or in moderation even. Um, I have a mix of uh, here's stuff I do, and then here's stuff I try and minimize, and I think that's helped me. My uh, uh, yeah, I think that has helped me. So, so yeah, what do I think? I think the truth is somewhere in the middle, but that's just an opinion. It's just your opinion, man. <laughs> I watched The Big Lebowski again recently. Uh, I was yeah. Anyway. Don't ramble, Jason. All right. I think there's a lot we don't know about our cancer and what impacts it. I think uh, there's just enough information about how certain foods uh, help us fight our cancer that it's worth the effort to give our bodies the best possible support while going through this ordeal. I hate that word, ordeal. Yeah. So I did a bunch of research. Research. <laughs> I just talked about that in my last episode. It's not research. I did a bunch of Googling and reading papers and um, coming up with lists of what do I think is safe? What am I willing to uh, make changes on? And what that is the impact on what the what impact that has had on my health during my cancer treatment. 
Uh, I don't think I'm doing as bad as others have been or that I, uh, what's the right way to say this? I don't think I'm doing as bad as I could be, but that, that does, that sounds weird. I think I'm doing better than, um, I should be. There we go. That's what I'm trying to say. I think I'm doing better than I should be because of, and I, and the only thing I have to attribute it to is my diet. Um, my testosterone level is three, whatever those units are. Nanograms per milliliter? No, that's PSA. Whatever the units of testosterone are, uh, mine are at three. I don't know if you can tell, my eyes are like half closed all the time. I am just exhausted, fatigued. Uh, like, there, if I said I had low energy, that's, that's no, no, I, I'm beyond low energy. I am exhausted. And I'm basically fueled by coffee. Uh, basically fueled by this diet, the the nutrients. I'm trying to put more po- of these really good nutrients into my body. Um, and I have evidence um, of that success. My PSA uh, immediately dropped. Uh, there's a lot of guys that will be in the 10s, 20s, 30s, and it'll uh drop down to, you know, some single-digit number over a month or two, and then they'll get down to two or three nanograms per milliliter by, uh, you know, two, three months. And mine dropped like a rock. So I did something right. Um, my It means a couple things. It means my body was very responsive to the hormone therapy. And, yeah, I don't have any other explanation. Uh, so this is this is bad correlation, right? This is the kind of well, I did this and then I saw this, so that must mean. And that's not how it correlates. But I don't want to risk that it wasn't, if that makes sense. So we're going to talk through some of the things I've discovered, some of the stuff that's uh, in my uh, doctor in Doctor Lewinda's book. Um, it's in his, he has all the citations and the sources. Uh, this stuff doesn't come from just his book. This, there's so many reputable cancer doctors, uh, radiation oncologists, medical oncologists out there that are saying similar things. Uh, Mayo, the Mayo Clinic, PCRI.org, they're all saying similar things about how impactful our diet is on our health. So this isn't just a list of do this and don't do this. It's just a talk. This is just a discussion about choices there. Man, I could have made this intro so much simpler if I had just said that. So we're going to talk about the Mediterranean diet. We're going to talk about for, uh, protein. We're going to talk about fat. We're going to talk about dairy. We're going to talk about carb balance, cooking methods, um, chemicals in our food packaging. I think we all know that's bad. Um, yeah. So let's get going. Um, Mediterranean diet. What is the Mediterranean diet? The Mediterranean diet is probably our best bet for cancer protection. Uh, there's a lot of studies out there. Well, there's these blue zones, right? And the blue zones all have two things in common. One is low stress. And the other is uh, access to garden-grown local uh, uh, diet uh, food items that are vegetables, fruits, whole grains, and healthy fats. Right? It's that's not a diet. That's that's just how you should eat. That's a lifelong pattern of uh, the best bet for fighting anything, not just cancer, is uh, the. Fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and healthy fats. Yeah. Eat some olives. Have uh, some cherry tomatoes in the salad. And don't do the iceberg lettuce type salads. Look for leafy green salad, something that's nutrient rich. Uh, not that's been starved of nutrients for, so that it's cheaper. Um, little rant. Anyway, uh, studies have consistently shown that. A Mediterranean-like diet reduces the risk of lots of cancers, not just prostate cancer, but lots of cancers. So, uh, and you can Google that. Google Mediterranean diet and see what shows up, and then you don't have to go like, I'm on the Mediterranean diet, and that's all I'm going to do. You just say, all right, I'm going to take a look at what my food choices are every day and try and lean them towards that. That's kind of what I do. You know, when I'm out to eat other than uh, not two nights ago 
I was in uh, Southport, North Carolina, and I went to the Oyster Bar, and I ate all the seafood in the ocean, and it was awesome. Um, but normally, if I have given a choice, I'll go for something rich in tomatoes. I'll go for something that's uh, very uh, have, has lots of vegetables, especially if it's broccoli, uh, Brussels sprouts, kale, any anything that's these cruciferous. Um, I'll look for cauliflower options, and I think that helps. All right. Yeah, Mediterranean. Let's see what's next. Dairy, dairy, and cancer risk. It's a bit mixed, so you have to make a choice here. You have to make a choice. You have to watch a couple stu- watch a couple studies, read a couple studies, watch a couple videos, uh, determine whether you liked how they isolated whatever in the study and what they were studying, and um, be careful because there's. I think I shared this anecdote anecdote in a previous video where the for a little while they were saying soy milk prevents prostate cancer. And then uh, some guy, after several years of that being out there, some guy was like, I don't believe that. And so he did more studies. And it wasn't the fact that they were drinking soy milk. It was the fact that they weren't drinking regular milk. (laughs) They weren't drinking whole milk. Um, And that's what helped them, uh, is reducing their dairy. So... Yeah, it's it's a, that this is an evolving one. This is an in progress evolving thing. Uh, there there are studies that show milk consumption has been linked to an increased risk of prostate cancer. Prostate cancer, and in at least one study, if you do have prostate cancer and a high dairy intake, that increases your risk of aggressive prostate cancer by thirty percent. But once again, there's other studies that show it might protect against. Uh, colorectal cancer uh so this is it's it's complex it's it's important to consider these differences these nuances the fact that we don't have a book of truth on is this poison or is it not poison is this going to help you and cure you or is it going to hurt you it's not that black and white which is frustrating which is why videos like this are important right we just talk about it talk about it uh, I found studies based that say that uh, dairy is bad, and I've reduced my dairy intake greatly. Uh, I went dairy-free for probably a month leading into uh, the couple weeks before my radiation treatment and my uh, hormone therapy started and kept it that way for a couple weeks after I started, and my PSA dropped like a rock. Maybe they're correlated. I don't know. There's no, there's no way to know. Um, balance in protein intake. Yeah, balancing our protein intake is crucial. Uh, animal proteins are important, but it's important not to overdo it just because we don't know for sure exactly how those tie to cancer risk, cancer risks, especially like egg yolks, right? Uh, hey, they're good for you, they're bad for you, they're good for you, they're bad for you, but now they've been linked to certain cancers. Um, I don't know. With the red meat, it's, uh, yeah, hey, red meat's bad for you, red meat causes cancer. Well, what they found, because some guy says, I don't believe that, and then they do more studies, and they figure out, oh, it might not have anything to do with the red meat at all. It might not be the fact that you're eating red meat. It's how the red meat is cooked. Because when we cook red meat, we're typically cooking at a really high temperature. We're searing the crap out of it. Um, Hey, I'll bring up my... I I was looking at this earlier tonight. And so I was looking at this earlier tonight. And it says that the risk of cancer from red meat may be more closely related to the methods of cooking rather than the meat itself. Several studies have explored this connection. It's the formation of the carcinogenic carcinogen, carcinogenic compounds during high temperature cooking. Uh, formation of the, the carcinogenic compounds. So cooking meat at high temperatures, such as frying and grilling, produces heterocyclic amines, HCAs, and polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, PAHs. So these compounds form when amino acids and creatine react at high temperatures, common in methods like grilling. 
Uh, the National Cancer Institute highlights that uh, these HCAs and PHAs are known carcinogens in animal models. And we are sort of animals. Uh, but we don't know the direct impact on humans, so they're still studying this. And it goes on and on. Uh, increased risk with well-done meat. Study by Sinha, published in Cancer Research, found that the increased risk of colorectal adenomas, adenomas, adenomas was primarily linked to well-done or very well-done red meat. Uh, this excess risk was significantly higher compared to the consumption of rare or medium red meat. So it just, but then there's variations in the studies. So, man, it's such a mess. I wish this was easy. I wish this was just an easy answer, an easy video. Uh, but we all have to make some choices, and this just helps us make those choices. So as far as meats, um, balance your protein intake. Consider minimizing your animal-based proteins. Uh, try and keep it to fish where you can. But there's no right or wrong. Um, just stay up on the studies. Pay attention to every time a study comes out. Make sure you're, you're doing what's best for you. Flaxseed. Flaxseed's a powerhouse. Uh, it's soluble fiber. It's high in omega-3s. It helps slow digestion. Um, uh, you can throw it in. I, it's, I put this in the smoothie I make every day. And uh, Dr. Lewin's book talks about some uh, facts about omega-3s and how they're important for fighting cancer and how the fiber is important for getting stuff out of your system. Um, flaxseed is keep a couple bags on handy. Just throw it on everything. If you're having a salad, throw some flaxseed on it. If you're making a smoothie, throw some flaxseed in it. Low fat or vegan uh, so there is a lot of evidence saying that low-fat vegan diet may benefit men with low-risk low, low risk prostate cancer. So I'm not low-risk. I'm high-risk. But that doesn't mean it doesn't help high-risk as well. Um, what they're, and they're not sure, is, this, um, is it because of exactly that that they're eating, or is it just overall uh, a, a, a better approach to health? Is it a better... Or are they having a better diet just improves your chances. They don't know. Um, but it's clear that whichever re for whatever reason, having a high vegetable and um, fruit intake diet, uh, doesn't have to be completely vegan, obviously, but if it's more vegan-like um, and low-fat, then you're going to be better off. Antioxidant-rich foods, uh, rainbow of fruits and vegetables. Yeah, blueberries, bananas, um, apples, pink fruits, red fruits, lycopene, uh, watermelon, uh, tomatoes. Right? They all this stuff has uh, grapes, red grapes. They have things uh, in them, lycopene and some other stuff. Uh, and Anti, no, not anti, anti anthocyanins that may prevent tumor development. How freaking cool would that be? Hey, I don't want cancer, so I'm just going to eat some watermelon, tomatoes, and grapes and not get cancer. If only it was that easy, we wouldn't be here. But there's good information out there supporting that having a diet rich in those things uh, does help. So... Healthy fats uh, and omega balance, uh, yeah, when I say low fat, I mean bad, low bad fats. It's important to have healthy fats, so olive oil, omega-rich fish. Uh, maintain a balance between your omega-6s and your omega-3s. That balance is more about the inflammation than the actual cancer risk, but uh, helping prevent the or reducing the infl inflammation potentially helps uh, your, improve your prognosis against cancer. So l another one is macronutrient balance. And this is kind of the whole message of the whole thing, right? Every meal, every time you eat, uh, as long as you have a good balance of proteins, fats, and carbs, pay attention to that. Uh, look for natural, unprocessed foods. Uh, the, the thumb rule that is just 
bloody brilliant is if you go shopping, if you're um, whether it's through Instacart or in person, don't go shopping in the aisles. Uh, go shop around the store. Anything you really need is around the perimeter of the store, except for the bakery. Don't do the bakery. Go through the the fruits and vegetables and the meat counters and uh, get the real food. Stay away from packaged and processed stuff. If it's cup, if it's in a box, you shouldn't be eating it. Probably. <laughs> Now I'm turning into a lecturer. I don't mean to. Um, but always try to include a variety of nutrients in every meal because that's kind of what we're we're kind of guessing at is like the tomato study. It's not just the lycopene. It's this this combination of everything you're intaking. So keep the better variety you provide yourself with every time you eat, uh, the better ch- your chances are. And you need protein. So I've talked, uh, especially in the last episode, my muscle mass is just depleting. Like it's oh, just crazy. I am losing strength like it's, I don't even have a good analogy. I didn't last in the last video either. Um, but it's just going away. It's just running away like, uh, I don't know. And I'm trying to increase my protein intake. I'm trying to eat more fish. I'm trying to eat more, uh, put more plant-based proteins into my system. Uh, so I'm, I've bought a plant-based protein supplement and I put that in my smoothie every day. Um, I'm adding it to my almond milk. Um, I haven't started putting it in my coffee yet because it doesn't really dissolve. Plant-based proteins, that's the difference between that and whey. Whey will dissolve. Plant-based proteins do not. So you're drinking sludge so that's where this it's better in a smoothie but you have to have protein especially during cancer treatment when you are losing muscle Uh, the better you can the the, the higher quality you can keep it the better so uh, fish meat beans 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 yeah (laughs) Uh, it'll help you maintain your strength and your overall body health um don't have a lot of refined carbs, you know, those boxes of mac and cheese and stuff. Minimally refined. Minimally refined carbs. Um, so you want something that's rich in minerals and vitamins and fiber. Uh, you don't want rapid blood sugar spikes. So it's all about choosing the right kind of carbs if you're going to have some. I like this, uh, what's the name of the bread? Killer Dave's. He's got several different sp- types of bread that are healthy grains, sprouted grain. Um, and if, so when I have toast, like I do my guac, I do toast with hummus and then guacamole and then broccoli sprouts and then slices of tomatoes and then some black pepper. Oh man, that's good. But I want, so when I have that toast, uh, I like to use that famous Dave's killer bread. So let's, and let's, I need to wrap this up. Uh, the last one, be careful about what things are packaged in. We uh, we know that BPA now is, uh, can interfere with us chemically, uh, can interfere with chemotherapy. It can promote cancer cell proliferation. This is something we do know about. And we have to be careful about anything that's in plastic. Uh, make sure it's BPA free. It's an often overlooked aspect of uh, our fight in, against cancer and our diet choices. So each of these things I talk through has some little insights, right? It has some ideas. Uh, there's this isn't meant to be and and can't be a list of eat this and this and this and this. Avoid this this and this. Uh, generally, a lot of people are going to be fine with the whatever you want in moderation. Not everybody will. Some people want to make cho- better personal choices on food, um, and that's that's good too. So either way, there's these food choices can impact your cancer treatment and your overall health. So I wanted to share my personal experience, the changes I made when I was diagnosed, and uh, yeah, I. I I hope this helps. I hope it's so I've like I said I've adopted healthier eating habits. I make little choices every day. Today, guess what? I eat pizza. 
I had three slices of Supreme pizza. Uh, so, am I going to be, is that going to suddenly send me into the, uh, you know, my cancer's like, blah, all of a sudden growing? No. It's a choice for a meal. Um, before that, I had a smoothie with uh, the broccoli sprouts, the flax seed, the blueberries, banana, almond milk, all that stuff. Um, I'm trying to balance better. I'm going to go to dinner tonight with a friend, and I'm going to make better choices. Uh, what I want is the seared ribeye. Um, I might get that. No, I might make a, but they have some, they have a tomato-based uh, dish on the menu too, and I might go for that, right? It's these little things, these little choices you're making along the way that uh, that matter. Uh, I love my bre- my daily breakfast smoothie, leafy greens, blueberries, flaxseed, all that stuff. It doesn't just nourish me, it, it gives me energy, which I desperately need right now. Um, it really helps my mood. It helps uh, get me, keep me going every day. So make sure you're exploring, uh, your dietary choice. Make, think about what you're eating when you eat it and say, is this what I want? And is this what I need? And, and which one, uh, what am I, ma- what are you making your choice between? What works for one person might not work for other. It's all about finding what feels right for you. Pay attention to your body. Stay open to learning and adapting. Uh, and know that our understanding of nutrition and cancer is constantly evolving. It's also important, this is a big note here, to discuss any dietary changes with your health care team to make sure they align with your overall treatment plan. There's, like grapefruit, you can't just go eat grapefruit depending on what drugs you're on. Uh, so be careful. There are some bad choice. There are some legitimate. Your healthcare team needs to know choices out there. And remember, your food isn't just about food. It's about your mental health. It's about your physical health. It's about, uh, uh, yeah, it's it's a huge part of our lives. So I just wanted to share these thoughts with you. I wanted to say, hey, uh, I'm thinking about you. Um, to, I, I'm reading your stories. I'm reading uh, everybody popping in and saying, "Hey, this is this is where I'm at," and I appreciate that. I really, really do. Um, we have to support each other. We and I and I I love that we're building a network of support. Um, yeah. With that, take care. I love you all. <laughs>